Well, welcome back. I am working on the door now. And because the uh, my collector has asked for a blue door there, and because the ocean is more phthalo blues and more of the more intense blues, I'm going to make the door with a mixture of ultramarine blue plus white. And the sun is coming in from the upper right. Actually, it's, it's coming in kind of at an angle so that it lights this wall more intensely, but then this light, this wall also gets some light. So the light on the door will actually be in this area, and the shadow is then going to be on this other area here along this, this side. And you can see this is again my large, this is a bright brush. It's got a square square end, but I can use the corner then to cut around the detail on the wall there. There'd be little indentations in between where the rocks and that rock wall. I can make that edge more, whoop, a little bit far there. I can come back and, and paint over that. I'm going to have sunflowers down here at the base on the left side of the doorway. So I'll go ahead and stop right about there. The flowers will break out over the door. My easel is rattling. I've got my T-square um, hanging on the back of my easel and it's just rattling. And the other rattle you hear is my tissue paper that hangs on the, off of my palette. I use tissue to wipe my brush. I have to keep my brush clean. Secret to clean paint on the canvas is a clean brush. So I just can I've saved my colors from my wall, my rocks, and then I can just bring them down over the, the ultramarine blue there. Again, that edge is not straight because each of the rocks is irregular. They pop out over that. Just come up here, do the same thing up here. Work around these rocks on the arch. And these rocks, it doesn't matter, matter if there's some little shading on them because that just gives the feeling of the texture on the rocks, indentations, and these big old rocks aren't smooth. I will bring that highlight here. I can't believe tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Everybody is in the midst of just getting ready for Christmas and what oh, crazy. Just this year with Thanksgiving being so late, it seems like Christmas is just on top of us so, so quickly. But I hope everybody will take a stop, take and stop a minute and just remember the real reason for Christmas is that we're celebrating the the birth of Jesus, our Savior, who went on to die for our sins and rose again. And because of that, we will be one day in heaven with Him. We believe in Him and just, we're so blessed. So the real reason for Christmas, all the Christmas carols and everything, Santa Claus and all, is really fun. But just take a minute and thank God for his sacrifice for us, His mercy and grace. And also, say a little prayer for all those people who can't get home for Christmas. You know, there are servicemen that are protecting us in other countries, and our policemen, and EMS, and all those people who serve and protect us. 
They make huge sacrifices for us so we can live in freedom. And it's just really important to remember them and say a little prayer for them. And their families. You know, they miss having them. I think of all of our, we have a little fire station just down the street from us. And I drive by on the way home from Christmas service, Christmas Eve service, Christmas morning, and they're there just in case somebody's house burned down. I mean, just as so thankful for them. In fact, it's kind of fun to I like to take them Christmas cookies. They're always so surprised, but it's just fun to remember to remember those people that do so much for us that we don't even see. Okay, let's get this. I've got my shadow in. Now, this is a lighter mixture of my white plus ultramarine blue. And I just, the sun's coming down and hitting, hitting here. So we see the arch. I just have a rattling easel today. I've got to move that T-square. Big door. This is a big painting. The painting, the outside of the frame, measures 48 inches by 48 inches, so it's a bigger piece. And the sunflowers then cast a shadow on the door, because again, the light's coming in this direction, so cast a little bit of a shadow on the door. Not much. And the bougainvillea up here. Some of the take some little shadows. And you can see here the shadows come down and come on down. Finish this little edge here. We'll finish out this, just bring the next to the rocks here. love these colored doors and they just make paintings happy. And this is one my collector also, Alyssa and her daughter Amy, love to have tea together. And they have they have some of the Wedgwood blue china, the Wedgwood china that has the blue and white designs. So those designs will also be in this ultramarine blue plus white. So that'll tie the door. Oops, didn't have a clean brush. You can see where I've got some of my white going up in here. I can just scrape that off. And I'll come back with my ultramarine blue mix. Ultramarine, just this is again a, the darker mixture. I can just paint back over that and fix that. Now I want to soften these shadows. So what I do is I take a clean brush, cleaned it out and then I can just drag over that shadow and make it softer. And I want to soften this edge here. In fact, I want to make some of the little indentations in it so it looks like it's, it's that rock wall is casting it. So I don't want it to be totally straight. I want it to be uneven. Get down here and just add a little more darkness into that shadow. Okay, now I get my moss stick. I'm 
this I hook over the top of the easel and I can brace my hand on it to make some of these finer details. Now I'm taking a mixture of mud, which is my two parts ultramarine blue and one part alizarin crimson, and I'm just going along the backs of these rocks on this side where the, the crack is between the door and the wall. don't want it real prominent, but I, I do want a little bit of separation there just to just get the feeling of that little shadow in that crack. edge but just there we go now I am going to the boards in the door catch the light so the edges of the board I highlight let's see I'm As I get down here, I have a lighter mixture. I need to make that a little bit lighter. A little more white into that. But you can see how this blue is different from the blue in the water. If I had painted the door with phthalo blue plus white, it would have been so much like the water that you wouldn't have gotten that depth, that separation. I can just kind of slide my arm down the mall stick as I make this, this line, and it helps me to make an upright, straight line. Fortunately, these old boards don't have to be just perfectly straight. I'd be in trouble if they had to be. Okay, now the next board's going to go here. Do the board in the light area first and in case I need to adjust my shadow because if my line was going to fall right on the board line or the shadow line there, then I would need to move my shadow one way or the other. This is but I this is easy to do into the wet paint because you can just drag the line. If I waited until the door was dry to do these lines, it would be disastrous because the brush would skip and hop over the texture of the paint and I would not get a smooth line. Here, I did not get this. Oh. My neighbor stopped by to bring a little something for Christmas, which is fun. We have a great neighborhood here, and it's just fun. We uh, kind of look out for each other, and that's what life's all about. You know, life's about people. Helping each other. I like helping you. Please always feel free if you're an artist. Feel free to ask questions. You can ask them in the comments section. I do this blog for two reasons. I do it so my collectors can see as I paint their paintings and I do it for artists so that they can learn and watch, ask questions. I'm just having trouble getting that line straight. But I can just go back in with my base color and just paint over it and go again at it. But anyway, I so many people helped Jack and I as we were in all of our careers as artists and people still help me and I just feel that it's my responsibility to give back. 
God so blessed me that I can just give back to others. You know, artists are different. It, uh, we can all look at the very same thing and we'll paint it differently. So hoarding ideas and techniques and stuff is it's not necessary. Just freely share and just give to each other. We're in, all in this together. Well, it's a good thing that these old boards aren't straight because I'm not, these are not the straightest lines in the world. That's the nice thing about painting these old buildings. And the rocks go every which way and then that. The boards go every which way and that. These old doors are, the boards are weathered. They may be painted, but they're still, they're still not totally straight. There we go, got the lines in the door now for the handle. Let's see, I'll pull out a smaller brush for that. Okay, now I'm going to make the handle with a mixture of my mud plus liquid. And the handle is going to start it right about here. And I just draw this into the wet paint of the door. It's much easier to do while this door is wet. And you can see I have my tissue paper and I just keep wiping my brush and bracing my hand on the mall stick. Just come down. Make this a nice smooth curve. I can shape this. I need to actually bring this over just a little bit so I can use this paint to move that line over. darker. You can see I hold the brush back at the far end, at the very end of the handle. They make this long handled brushes for a reason. You actually have more control over your brush if you hold it back at the end of the handle. This sounds kind of silly, but it's absolutely true. If you hold it up here, you get the jiggle in your hand. You can get a nice smooth brush stroke if you just ease back on the handle. And go further back. So make the highlight there where the sunlight hits that edge. And the light catches the, the tip of the handle down here. Now I'm going to make a shadow. Let's use a bigger brush that I used to initially do the handle. I want to clean it out real good, wipe it out. The, 
the shadow is going to follow the same angle as these bougainvilleas. And the shadow is darker up near the handle. fades out and gets softer as it goes down, further away. Shadows are more distinct, closest to the objects that are casting them. As the shadow falls away from that object, it gets fainter, the edges get softer. Get a shadow there cast. So there's our door. There we go. So I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel and visit my blog. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my video. And in the blog I show the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting as well as others I do. And again, if you'd like to ask questions, just feel free to ask them in the comments section. You have a wonderful, wonderful day and have a wonderful Merry Merry Christmas. Thank you again.